Gus Was a Friendly Ghost by Jane Thayer, illustrated by Seymour Fleischman. There was once a friendly ghost by the name of Gus. He lived in an old house in the country with apple trees and lilacs in the yard. Mr. and Mrs. Scott and their twins, Susie and Sammy, lived there too in the summer. The old house had an attic, and sometimes the Scots heard rattles and clanks in it. That was Gus. The Scots didn't believe in ghosts, so they didn't believe in Gus. Still, when they heard the rattles and clanks, they liked to say to their friends, We've got a ghost. The Scots made Gus feel welcome in the old house, so Gus liked them. He especially liked Mrs. Scott. She was so pretty. He wanted to please them all, so he rattled and clanked in the attic, the way ghosts are supposed to do. We've got a ghost, said the Scots proudly, though they didn't believe in ghosts. Then autumn came, and the Scott family left. No need to rattle and clank now. Gus had nothing to do but sit around. One day, he was so lonely, sitting around all by himself, that he went for a walk, and he met a mouse. How are you? said Gus. F -f Freezing, said Mouse with chattering teeth. Come and spend the winter at my house, cried Gus. Any people there? said Mouse. I do hate people. Not now, said Gus. Mouse scurried about the house. It seemed a good place to spend the winter, but it was chilly. Let's build a fire in the fireplace said Mouse with chattering teeth. I'll get a match. He scurried to the kitchen, but the Scots had taken all the matches away on account of mice. Bother, cried Mouse. Gus had never built a fire. Ghosts never get cold. But he wanted Mouse to be happy in his house, so he said some ghostly words he knew, and a fire began to blaze in the fireplace. Well, said Mouse with delight, Let's have a bite. I'll look in the cupboard. He scurried to the kitchen, but the Scots had taken all the food away on account of mice. Bother, cried Mouse. Gus had never cooked a meal. Ghosts never get hungry, but he wanted Mouse to be happy. Toasted cheese sandwich, said Gus. There isn't any, began Mouse. Then he saw that Gus was slicing a big piece of cheese. Mouse was delighted. Gus was pleased that he had thought of the cheese. Gus pulled a table up to the hearth. He piled nine pillows in a chair for Mouse. Mouse enjoyed his toasted cheese. Finally, Mouse wiped his whiskers. Which is my room, he said. Take your pick, said Gus. Bed will feel good, said Mouse. He scurried into the front bedroom, but Mrs. Scott had put newspapers all over the bed on account of mice. Mouse made a face. I do hate a newspaper, he said. He scurried into the back bedroom. I'll curl up in a drawer. But Mrs. Scott had put mothballs in the drawer on account of mice, of course. Mouse made a terrible face. I do hate a mothball, he said. Gus wanted Mouse to be happy in his house. Try the attic, he said. Mouse ducked into a hole in the wall that Gus showed him and found his way to the attic. He burrowed into an old mattress and went to sleep in the stuffing. Gus washed the dishes. He was delighted to have Mouse in the house for company. When Mouse woke up, he scurried downstairs and said, How do I get out of here? Don't go, cried Gus. Aren't you hungry? What are we having for dinner, said Mouse. Gus began to be very busy. Mouse liked his three meals a day, with nibbles in between. So Gus put on an apron. He got out a cookbook. He looked up all the things a mouse might like to eat. He spilled sugar all over the floor. He got flour all over his face. He burned his fingers, but he made macaroni and cheese and cheesecake. He whipped up cheese soup and cheese sauces. 
He baked cheese bread and cheese biscuits, cheese popovers, and cheese pie. Mouse never had time to help. He was so busy with various matters, but Gus didn't mind. Mouse grew plump on cheese sauce. At night when it snowed, Mouse read to Gus by the fire. Sometimes they played checkers. Sometimes they popped corn. Firelight flickered on the old window panes and smoke curled up the chimney. No one was near to notice. But at last the snow melted and the sun grew warm. The buds on the apple trees swelled, the lilacs burst into bloom, and one day a car drove into the yard. The Scots were back. When Mouse heard Susie and Sammy running through all the rooms, he ducked into the hole in the wall and rushed to the attic. When he peeked out of the mattress and saw his friend Gus, he cried angrily, I'll scare them away. Why, they're nice, said Gus in surprise. He was glad to see the Scots, especially Mrs. Scott. But Mouse had been so happy in the house with Gus's cooking and everything that he was furious to think the Scots had come and spoiled it. Gus couldn't cook with Mrs. Scott in the kitchen, so Mouse scampered down to the parlor when the Scots were playing checkers. He ran back and forth inside the wall, patter, 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 to scare them away. We've got a mouse, said Mr. Scott, but the Scots weren't scared away. What do you want to do that for, said Gus to Mouse. Mouse paid no attention. He scampered into the kitchen. He nibbled a piece of blackberry pie and tracked the juice around. He chewed open a box of marshmallow cookies. He spilled some tapioca. Behave yourself, said Gus. Mouse scampered into the bedroom and chewed a hole in a pillow for good measure. But the Scots weren't scared away. So Mouse scurried up to the attic after the Scots were in bed and stamped about over their heads, making all the noise a mouse could possibly make. Finally, Mr. Scott said, I'll set a mouse trap. The next day, Mouse saw a new thing in the attic and smelled something good. He was so hungry. His nose quivered. He crept closer and closer. Keep away, cried Gus. It's cheese, cried Mouse. It's a trap to catch you, said Gus. He put up a sign that said danger. When Mr. Scott didn't catch Mouse, he set another trap, then another. Gus kept putting up signs that said beware. Why can't you folks get along? cried Gus. But the more mouse traps Mr. Scott set, the more Mouse stamped about among the danger signs to scare the Scots away. Gus began to be really worried. He didn't want the, his friends the Scots bothered, and he didn't want his friend Mouse hurt. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened, he said. Then one day, Mouse became so determined to scare the Scots out of the house that he popped up on a kitchen shelf, bold as brass, when Mrs. Scott reached for the cereal. Help! screamed Mrs. Scott, running away. That was the last straw. When Gus saw Mrs. Scott, who was so pretty, scared out of her wits, all of a sudden he pointed his finger at Mouse and roared, That's enough! Mouse was so shocked that he stood stock still and stared. Listen to me, shouted Gus. If you stay in this house, you'll do as I say from now on. What? whispered Mouse. You'll stop scaring Mrs. Scott, roared Gus. Okay, said Mouse meekly. You'll stop nibbling and chewing. You can go out in the garden and eat nasturtium seeds, shouted Gus. Okay, said Mouse. You'll keep quiet while the folks play checkers. I'll walk on tiptoe said Mouse. You'll stop stamping around the attic. I'm the only one allowed to make a noise in the attic. I'll be as quiet as a mouse, said Mouse. All right, 
said Gus with a sigh of relief. Then he saw how meek and scared Mouse looked. It's just until the folks go away, he said kindly. So Mouse tiptoed about the house and ate nasturtium seeds in the garden. The Scot said, That mouse is gone! And Mr. Scott took away the traps. Gus rattled and clanked extra loud in the attic so the Scots could say, That's our ghost! And when the Scots went away for the winter, Gus and Mouse had a celebration with cheese croquettes for dinner. We just read Gus Was a Friendly Ghost by Jane Thayer, illustrated by Seymour Fleischman.